Here we are in Brighton to test out some new Voigtlander lenses. Today we've got the 50mm f2 Apo Lanthar, which is a beautiful, stunning, premium manual focus Voigtlander Casino lens. Yes, and I'm going all stealthy with the DXZ50, which is tiny, and a nice 23 1.2 lens to match it. We're going to talk about that one in another video, but we're going to concentrate on the 50 for this one. I've paired it with the Z6. Uh, let's go out and take some shots and see what it's like. Yeah, you're going to dive? Right there. <laughs> On a day like this, Becky, in the UK where we don't get much light, today is the day to go on Riviera. So what exposure settings are you using? I'd really like to be able to shoot wide open because I want to see what that depth of field is like. But right now I'm shooting between f8 and f11, and then between sort of 500 and a thousandth of a second, depending. Oh. The thing that I really like about these is the build quality. So the scallop focus barrel, and I mentioned this when we did our 35 video, and the aperture clicks are just so smooth. And all that information gets passed to the camera. So it's like using a Nikon lens with a chip in it. It's, it's a seamless experience. How do you find the aperture ring being at the front and not at the rear of the lens? That takes a little bit of getting used to. Okay, but is it easier after some use? Yeah, once you've programmed and hardwired your brain to do that instead of going back here it's actually really straightforward oh becky so tell me apple lenses are supposed to be the bee's knees of the sharpness how sharp is this lens it's it's pretty darn sharp to be honest but if you do nail the focus then you get a nice sharp image at 100 percent they work beautifully both at closest focusing distance and at infinity i don't really have any complaints oh. and i don't see any major chromatic aberration or anything like that either which is impressive for a day like today yes so focusing is no problem at apertures like f11 and on a day like this you have plenty of light so you shoot at iso 100 etc now have you shot with it wide open and how big is the vignette even just fall off from the middle of the frame yeah so we went inside a couple of the arcades and i had the opportunity to shoot at f2 you can see the vignetting it's very very obvious i quite like it Mm -hmm. As a creative vignette, I quite enjoy a little bit of that, particularly when you're shooting the arcades and you want that sort of decayed, old-fashioned look, mm -hmm. something kind of oldie-worldie about arcades. Uh, and, it, and it just it comes across really, really well yeah. in the pictures. What I found is that the neon in the inside the arcade, it, like wide open, is giving it a little bit of a glowy look. Yeah. If you want to get rid of the vignetting, then you really need to shoot at about f2.8, but it does actually allow you to shoot at 2.2 and between sort of 2.2 and 2.5. Mm. So it's got can... about one third of stop of increments between the uh, full apertures. Yeah, if you, if you don't actually click it, you can even get 2.4. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, and it's a cheap plan, so you don't need to set it up in the settings of the kill of the camera. So there's no CPU settings like you would do with a normal manual Nico AI or AI stuff lens. So it's straightforward, plug and play. Your rate should all the most will work, obviously except auto focus. Yes. One other thing I would add is that you get your focus confirmation. So although you can use focus peaking to your heart's content with the chip lenses, you do get the green square, which confirms that you're in focus, which is one thing slightly better than the Nikon lenses, I would say, because you don't get that with the mm -hmm. Nikon manual lenses.
series of pineapple on the pizza. Vinegar on chips or not? Yeah. I mean, I can have it with or without, but I'm a vinegar on chips kind of person. You're not my friend anymore. I love salt and vinegar crisps though. It's the same thing. I, I hate vinegar on chips. It's like awful. I can't have any of my chips then. <laughs> can I, have one I think chip? I'm not truly English. <laughs> I don't you know. think so. If you, have, if you had some questions how English is, Becky, she is. 100% British. British, mate. It's <laughs> so hot. The thing about shooting wide open with this lens, right, F2, first of all, have to at eight thousandths of a second because we don't have ND filter with us. That's number one. Number two, straight away in the viewfinder, we have a beautiful rendering, out of focus rendering. It's not as buttery and a bit of swirly as, let's say, with Nikon lenses. It almost feels kind of someone put a glass behind the subject. So you have a really nice separation, but without all those swirly artifacts. So very interesting rendering. I do enjoy that because it's different from Nikon lenses. And uh, as long as you're sharp, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a nice separation. Take a test of uh, shooting on different stops. Okay. You may be wondering why you would spend over 800 pounds on a 50 mil lens instead of just going ahead and buying the Nikon Z 1.8 lens, but I think we can safely say based on the pictures themselves, it gives you an entirely different look, feel and rendering to your pictures. That's true. With one caveat though, you need to be aware that it's a manual focus lens and you need to be able to shoot with manual focus lens. If you haven't done before, it will require a bit of practice, maybe hyperfocal distance adjustment, maybe something else. You know, it's interesting. I would actually put this lens, if you've got, you've got the 51.8, right? Which is just, it's good. It's about 600 pounds. Then you j jump up to the yeah. 51.2 at like nearly two and a half grand and you think, well, I can't quite go that far, but I want something a bit more special yeah. than just the standard 51.8. And I think that's where this falls. Yeah. The good news is it doesn't sit in the middle of the price range. It's actually <laughs> close to the bottom. So by adding a bit extra, you get one of those, you do definitely get a much more interesting rendering and definitely a sharper center. We'd like to thank you very much for watching. Please do give us a like and a subscribe. It's definitely helped the channel. And let us know what you think of the images. Is this a lens that you would go for? We'd love to hear your comments. <laughs> and if you did find this video really, really useful, there's a super thanks button to super thank us. Here it is. Okay. Scalloped focus barrel. Mm-hmm and the yeah. smooth that's very <laughs> smooth <yeah. laughs> that's why you take the camera then you go boom documentary <laughs> do you make a bit more noise please becky's not annoyed at all <laughs> <laughs>